Hey, what's up boxers? This is Zach Rizet with BuildBox. In this video, I wanted to just keep having some fun with the software and show you a few more things. Now, in the last video, I showed you a couple particle emitter tricks, and I actually wanted to show you another one right now. This is another one that I just found, and so I thought I'd show it to you real quick. So, in this example, I'll go ahead and show you. This is from our ZigZag preset, and let me just show you this little coin that Danny made here. Now, you notice the type of particle emitter that's coming out of it. It's like going out and then it's coming back in and so it's kind of creating this like that kind of like an atom look where the where the particles are coming out and then going back in and it kind of looks like this creates this really cool circular effect. And so I thought I'd show you that right now. So if you go over here to coin and you select coin and you go over here to default animation there's going to be a particle emitter that Danny used and so let's check out exactly how he's got this particle emitter set so right here you can see I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it a little bit better but you can see the particles going out and then in and he really just uses the same image that um, you can see here that he uses the same image as the coin. It's just little tiny mini versions of it. So if you'll notice here, he's got the total particles set to 50 and the emission rate set to 10. And he's got a start size set to five and then it tapers down to zero. Now the thing that Danny really does with this though, and this is really how you create this effect, is Danny's got the radial acceleration set to negative a thousand. So it comes in or it goes out and then it comes back down and comes in. And it's, he's got the speed set to 400. So there's a good amount of speed coming out and then the radial acceleration brings it back down. And he's got the angles going at 360. So it's going in every direction through a full 360 degrees around the circle. And then he's got a life set to two. So it ends up coming, working out perfectly. And so yeah, I just wanted to show you that real fast, real quick, because I think it's a great particle emitter effect. You'll notice that I believe he uses it on the character as well. Let me exit out of the particle emitter editor and let me select the character and you should be able to see it on the player as well. Or maybe he's got the particle emitter. Oh, okay, he's got it in the scene. So if you go here, He's got the particle emitter right here underneath the character. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's hooked up through the um, connection mode. And there it is. Yeah, that little red dot right there, you can see, I'll, I'll go ahead and move it. You can see that it's actually connected underneath. And then I'll just hit, hit Control Z to move it back. But this particle emitter is gonna have something similar set up to it where it's going out and that back down and back in. So the radial, radial acceleration on this one is set to negative 1,000 as well, but the speed is a little bit slower. It's only set to 350 and not 400. So the little dots are not going out as far. So anyways, I just wanted to show you that as a quick example of some, another thing that you can do with the particle emitter. And I think this is another effect that I wish I had mentioned yesterday, but I'll go ahead and mention it now. And I think it's something that you can definitely use for your games. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out some, a few more things. Okay, so another really cool effect that I wanted to share with you is this little effect that Danny's got going on with this wall reverse template that we have. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just preview it right now so you can see what I'm talking about. But when you start this game, there's little particle emitters that are shooting out from the bottom, but not only are there particle emitters shooting out, but there's also a spawner that is shooting out different size yellow balls that are constantly growing and more and more are coming out of it. And it kind of looks like one of those like ball pits that you would mess around with when you're like a kid in some sort of, I don't know, like a playground or something like that. Um, so this is a pretty cool effect. I know I've seen it used in the game Phases that was created by Trey Smith and was published by Ketchup and it was a very successful game. And it's got a really, really, this is a really cool effect. And what it can do is it can kind of create a sense of urgency. Like if there's a pit that you needed to jump over and if the little balls or little enemies in the pit were constantly growing, you would only have a certain amount of time available to get by before the pit fills up and you're no longer able to get by it. So this is a pretty cool effect. It uses the combination of particle emitter and a spawner. And so I thought I'd show it to you right now. So let's take a look at this. So he's got a platform and a triangle platform underneath here. And I'm gonna go ahead 
ahead and just go over here to my X, and you see this little eyeball and this lock button right here, these two little symbols. What this means is if I click this dot, it becomes visible and invisible. And then the lock allows you to move it around and then not move it around. And locking it up will make it so that it has to stay there and you can't mess with it anymore. And so let's take a look at what's hiding underneath this triangle. So Danny's got a couple different of the main character balls, but they are shrunken down. A few of them are scaled down a little bit. This one's about half the size. And not only does he have them scaled down, but he's got a little spawner. And that's what this green arrow with this red dot in the middle means, that it's got a spawner hooked up. And so you can see the spawner settings over here on the right. Right now, the spawn rate is about half a second. Uh, every half a second, there's another one of these little guys that are being pushed up and then sitting on top of this triangle here. And then it's the same thing with these. This one's set to every two seconds. This one's set to every two seconds, but with a variable of a, a randomizer set to one. And so what ends up happening is the balls just, as the spawner keeps spawning and spawning and spawning, the balls keep adding up and they move on top of each other and stack on top of each other. And he's got the object type set to physics. And so you've got this really cool effect where the balls are moving freely and the other ball can move around with it and interact with those balls and not get killed because the collision is set to, it's set to collide with the character, but it's not going to destroy because it's only a decoration. Each one of these is set to a decoration. Now you can also set it to enemy or something like that if that's what you want to do with your game, but I think it's a pretty cool effect that you can add to your game. I know I've seen it in phases before, so it's definitely a proven technique technique that works and a publisher like Ketchup or Voodoo or somebody like that would definitely, it, it could definitely work for one of their games. Okay, let's take a look at a few other things. So one more effect that Danny created with the particle emitter and I thought was worth sharing with you is the action animation on this coin. Okay, and let me go ahead and just show you. So this is our wall jump preset. So it's kind of similar to zigzag, but it actually moves the ball straight across instead of at an angle. So it looks kind of like it is at an angle because the screen is constantly moving forward and there's a forced movement, I think, set to like about 25 or something like that. But it moves straight across in this template. But you notice here that when he's collecting the coins how it just bursts into a bunch of little versions and that you can kind of get a cool animation there so let me just show you exactly how Danny does that so I'm gonna exit out of the preview here and this is a cool template right here but you'll notice over here that once you select your coin from the actions and you go over here to the action animation it looks empty it looks like there's nothing in there and normally when you drop in an animation there would be some sort of image there but this is kind of a cool trick so if you go into the action animation you click the edit button you'll notice that there is something in there and that's a particle emitter it's another one of Danny's handy dandy particle emitters and so let's check take a look at what he's got these settings set to and so you can see the cool effect okay so right here you can see that it's just a burst in each direction there's a whole bunch and it's kind of random each time and so let's see what it's set to so the total particles are set to 15 and the emission rate is set to a thousand and the start size is set to 15 and it tapers down to zero and he's got a speed of 300 and the angle at 360 of course because it's going at random directions but it's a set to a randomizer of 300 so it's random each time and that's why it looks different but he's got this awesome speed set to it and the life expectancy of only two so it, it ends up going firing out and then after two seconds, it should just die out. And eventually it, it starts a certain size and then it tapers down to zero, so it ends size. But it's a really, really cool burst. And it's set so that it happens like the emission rate is only a thousand, is set to a thousand. So it goes once and then you've got a long wait before you see the next one. And that's why when you're previewing it, and I'm gonna exit out of the editor here, that's why when you preview it, it, you just see that one single burst, boom, burst, and then it's and then it's done. And it's move. You're, once you move past the scene, you won't you won't see the other emission rates. It'll eventually, you know, stop the object, and so you um, you only see that one burst. 
And so anyways, I thought it was a cool effect and I thought it'd be worth knowing in, in showing you guys. So I hope you thought that was cool. So let's check out a few others. So another preset or another game that I wanted to show you is this game called Swipe Board. Now I've gotten a few questions about this one and about how it works exactly because it's a little bit complicated. Let me show you the preview right now so you can see what the gameplay is like. So it's got swipe controls and you're able to swipe up and down and oops I just died but you're able to swipe up and down and to the left and right and you've got these little black balls that are flying at you every which way and those are the enemies and then those are actually what defeats you. So, ooh, it's getting close. So a lot of people were asking me how exactly this is this is done. How how is this done in Buildbox? And so let me just go ahead and break it down for you and show you exactly how you create and achieve this effect. So I'm gonna exit out of the preview right now. And what you can see here is there's a whole bunch of paths and we've got this kind of a tic-tac-toe grid here in the center and you've got your character movement here and it's set to uh, swipe control on the UI so you're able to swipe up and swipe down swipe left and right so that's how the swiping effect is created and um, so it's just a matter of adding swipe control and let me show you real quick what I'm talking about so if you go over here to your mind map and then go to your world UI you go to your characters control and there's swipe control right here at the bottom and then that is what is taking up the space right here and it's stretched out ac across the entire screen so you can swipe anywhere on the screen and it'll register it for your game so that's how you do the swipe control now these paths is what I wanted to really show you so if you take a look at these paths all right each one is set to go straight across um, straight across the grid and what you'll see is that each one is set to an affected asset. So you can choose to have these paths affect the character or a specific asset. And so what we've got it set to is specific assets and it's set to gray one. And then this one will be set to gray two and then this one will be set to gray three. Now here's what I mean by the gray one, gray two, and gray three. Each one of these right here, this is gonna be probably gray one, this'll be gray two, and this'll be gray three. And what you can see is that they're completely different objects and they're all set to, um, they're set to platforms, but they do destroy the character. That's the, that's the, the main point here is that they will defeat the character. And so those work essentially as enemies, but you can see over here in the object section, we've got a gray one enemy, a gray two enemy, and a gray three enemy. And here's why this is, okay? So this is set to a spawner and it spawns every four seconds, I believe. And so the spawner rate's set to four and it's gonna spawn and it's gonna go negative 1.5. So it's gonna go in the X direction. It's gonna move this way at negative 1.5 speed. And then since this one is gray one, once it comes in contact with this path, then it's, as soon as it comes in contact with this path, then it's gonna start moving upwards. And it starts moving up at a speed of 3.5. All right, and so that's how it works. But you can't have this path set to gray one and this one set to gray one as well because what would happen is this, this gray one would start moving over and it would run into this one each time. And so it would only get to this one. And that's why you have to have different enemy sets here set so that it reaches the different path. Now this one's going to be, this one's gray three. And so it's gonna move all the way over here until it hits this path and then it's gonna move up. And once it moves up here, then it's done. Okay, and it, it completes the path. And it's, it's set to, I believe, single use, okay? So the, it goes up once and as soon as it reaches the end of the path, then it's done, okay? But that's how you create these enemies that are moving and sliding upwards like this. First, they're moving to the left, then they hit the path and then they move up. And that's what creates this effect right here. And then you can also see that awesome particle emitter that Danny created that's coming out from the center. And that's also a really cool feature of this game. So anyways, I just wanted to show you how you can create something like this. I hope that it gives you an idea of something that you can do for your game and it might be able to give you some inspiration to do something completely unique, but it's an awesome game mechanic that you can do with Billbox and it's really, really easy to hook up. Okay. So let's take a look at a few more things. Okay, so I wanted to show you one last trick before I end this video, and this is a trick on how you can create a game where you have to collect a certain amount of things inside the game before you can move on to the next stage. 
So let me go ahead and just preview this right now so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? So you've got this little character here and you can see all these little coins, these little diamonds. And what you can do is you can set it so that the character has to collect all of these coins or all these diamonds before the character is able to move on. So you'll notice here that I collect all the way, I get to the very end, but it still doesn't say stage clear or anything like that. I'm not able to move on. So you have to make it so that you collect each one of these and then boom, you win. So here's how this is done. A lot of you probably already know this, but I just wanna kinda of show you. So this is all done actually with the World UI and using event observers. Now, event observers can be a really, really awesome way to get some cool features implemented into your game. You can use it for health bars, you can use it for, um, this one's set to game over. If you are defeated, the character is gonna be automatically sent over to the game over UI. Um, but what I wanted to show you is this event observer where it says the event type is set to session coins and it's set to 18 coins. So you have to collect all 18 before it moves you on. So there's 18 total here and it will not let you finish until you've collected all 18. And then what it does is it sends you, it says all coins, and it sends you to the game one UI, and that's just this, that's just the label appearing, you win. But there's other things that you can do. You can send a, you can send a player to a whole new world at that point, or do a couple other things. So I just wanted to show you that that's how you could create a situation or a game where you have a world and you want to make it set so that they have to collect every single coin before they can move on. So I hope you like this video. If you think this video is useful and you wanna see more videos like this, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. All right, thanks everybody.